So we're continuing our journey with um, the major arcana of the tarot. As you know, in the last episode, or the last video, I um, ended on strength, and I'm now moving on to the Hermit card. So here's the Hermit card. I've got my giant Rider Waite Smith deck out. Um, I've put the link if you want the giant cards in the first video, part one of the Major Arcana. So this is part three, and we're moving on to the Hermit card. And the Hermit card is actually the crone card of the Maiden Mother Crone, as you might remember from me talking about that. So the Hermit represents the crone. It's the number nine. So nine is about completion. It's also a very mystical number because it's three times three. Um, so, and it's, it, the crone is, uh, and the hermit are all about, um, well, it is about going within. A lot of people think it's about um, removing yourself from society and becoming a hermit and all that kind of stuff. And yes, it is. It is about the labyrinth within and getting to know thyself kind of thing, right? Um, and truly understanding our divine parts of ourselves and understanding the, the connection. Um, so like I said, a lot of people um, tend to think he's all about taking himself or herself out of the world and, and becoming the hermit. Um, so he is introverted at the start, definitely. Uh, the hermit stands for significant experiences in which we can recognize who we are, what we are, and how to get there, and what we want. He combines two valuable extremes in himself, the depth of experience and the height of knowledge. So that's his sort of extremes. Um, wrongfully, this card is feared by many people because his qualities are misunderstood. Sometimes people have a fear of loneliness and abandonment when they see this card because they think I have to go away from my friends and family and all that kind of stuff. And no, it's more about going within as opposed to going away. I mean, yes, it's great to unplug once in a while and all that kind of stuff, but he's not about withdrawing from the world forever and ever because that's actually not the point of the hermit. The point of the hermit is that more often than not when this card shows up in a reading it's actually not you know the time for a person to go away from the world now sometimes i do ask you know like are you feeling overwhelmed do you think maybe disconnecting would help that sort of thing but really what the hermit is about you'll notice that he's holding a lantern and in most tarot decks the hermit is holding the lantern or some kind of light source he's got his walking stick and his staff and his um, and his light. And that's because he's gotta come back out into the world because he is about that wisdom, he is about that knowledge, or she is if she's the crone. Um, and I use the crone as a very honored title, by the way. It's a title you have to earn and it's a title that is, like I said, great honor to have it. I'm going into my crone stage and I love that I'm embracing that part of myself now. Um, so like I said, the hermit is about coming out into the world and bringing that light of wisdom and knowledge and experience with them. So what they're, often what their main goal is when this shows up is it's time to come out into the world now. It's time to share that knowledge and experience because you now have that. Um, so that's what I try to gauge with my client is, you know, is there a situation, maybe it's a work-related thing, maybe it's, you know, life in general when you're raising kids or whatever. Do you find that you do have that wisdom? Do you do, that you do have that experience? Well, now's the time to share it. Someone's looking for that light or someone's needing that light because the hermit, he lights the path for with his wisdom and knowledge and experience for others to then follow on their path. 
that sort of thing. So that's what the hermit is generally about. He's not always about going away from the world. That's usually the first thing people think about. And especially if someone's been going through a depression, sometimes, like I said, it can wrongfully make them kind of sad because they see hermit and they think, well, I've already isolated myself as it is. Do I need to isolate myself even more? And then they get a little upset over that. Hmm. Still having voice problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting over my cold, but you can probably hear I'm a little sniffly still. Oh, those things hang on, right? Um, so anyways, so now we're going to go into the next card, which is the Wheel of Fortune, which is the 10. So remember I said nines are about completion? Well, I always kind of tell my clients that tens are completion with a gift. So this is why the Wheel of Fortune is here. Now, the Wheel of Fortune is sometimes called the Destiny card. Um, um, depending on which way we face it, it can be the fate card, the destiny card, and how are we going to face our destiny and, and our, our fate. Um, on one level, the card shows the situations in which we have at first no influence over. Because if you've ever watched the TV show Wheel of Fortune, you spin the wheel and you hope that you hit $10,000 as opposed to bankrupt. So it can go either way. But the nice thing about the Wheel of Fortune, even on the game show, is there's more money things than there are bankrupts, right? So you're more likely, like when this card shows up, it's most likely that something good is going to come into your life. <coughs> there's going to be a change of fate or destiny in your favor kind of thing. So I'm always happy when I see this card. And it does kind of depend on what around it right like if the devil's anywhere nearby maybe this isn't going to turn in your favor so this is something you need to look at now this is something I do like to remind my clients to like say there is the devil nearby this card and it's like okay so this isn't looking so great in this particular reading most of the time it is a good thing however I at that point when you're delivering bad news and I am a non-filter reader, so I will deliver the good with the bad. I don't try and sugarcoat things. I don't try and make things all lollipops and unicorns for people. But I often remind my clients that this isn't the future written in stone. Only the past is written as it is. You can't change that. This is the future. If you want to change it, you need to change the trajectory you're on. Because what the cards are saying is they're reflecting back to you who you are, what you're about, and what your most probable cause of or course of action is going to be. I kind of use the analogy of, you know, you go to the bar every night and you order a bunch of beers and you're drinking every night. So you're most likely to become an alcoholic if you keep up that habit, if you're going every single evening to the bar and drinking a lot of beer. However, so say this is the alcohol card, ooh, 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 and it, throw, it shows up. And I find out that that's the client's pattern is after work, I go to the bar, I drink a bunch of beer, I go home, yeah, I'm a little buzzed, and it, it's becoming a habit now, right? So that's when I would say something like, well, why don't you try not going to the bar every single night? Maybe go twice a week or, you know, once a week or, you know, whatever it is, right? So that you're not going every day. And that will change what this card will be. It won't be the alcohol card anymore because you're changing your pattern. So therefore, you're not going to go down that road of becoming an alcoholic. <coughs> so that's just an example that I use. It's an easy example. Um, so the Wheel of Fortune shows up. Um, shows us that it's a time to realize our plans. So it's also a, a, a card of movement because when you spin the wheel, of course, there's movement there. So it's a time to realize your plans, to kind of shit or get off the pot kind of thing when this card shows up. Um, and, it, it, and it's also sort of like a, a good idea, like not only to move on your plans, but this is actually the time because fate is saying it is, it's your destiny to do this. It's, you know, this is when good things are going to come in for, you know, whatever movement you try to do. 
Um, there's going to be people that will help you along the way or there'll be good luck that will happen and it'll make it smoother, the transition, whatever. This is kind of a transition card. So whatever transition you need to make, now's the time to do it because the road is fairly smooth. The sky is blue, not, you know, no rain or anything. If you wait, there might be a thunderstorm coming or there's a deer that's crossing the road that gets in your way and causes an accident or whatever, right? So this is sort of now is the time to move. Um, it's also, um, it can, like, like I said, it can turn down, but most of the time it's a happy card. So be happy when that shows up because it's, it's just a time of movement and it's a time, it, it's a, it's the best time to move. That's what it's kind of saying. That's why it's your destiny card, right? Um, then we've got justice. Here's justice. Number, um, 11. Yes, number 11. <coughs> so justice is also called the karma card. And the more, most um, frequent thing you'll see on all justice cards are scale. Because justice is blind and justice likes the scales to be balanced. And, you know, like karma is kind of blind that way too, right? Um, so they, it, it's an even keel kind of card. It's bringing things into, ju uh, into balance, I mean. Um, so it stands for clear objective knowledge, um, for conscious decided judgment, um, balance and fairness and shows us that we are right. <laughs> so I used to say that a lot that, okay, you're right kind of thing, but I don't mean like you're right. So go home to your hubby and say, mm -mm -mm, I was right. You know, it's not that kind of right. It's not an overbearing power tripping kind of right. It's just you know, like sometimes we question ourselves. Did we make the right decision? What was, you know, breaking up with so-and-so a good thing? I decided to, you know, sort of distance myself from this friend because it's very toxic, but she's always having problems and I feel bad because I was often the stone um, or the rock in her life. I mean, and when this shows up, when you're, when they're feeling bad about those kind of situations, that's when I say you were right. You know, not you were right and go home and rub your hubby's nose in it that you, you win the argument kind of thing. It's that you were right in perhaps putting that distance between you and the toxic friend who was dragging you down. Or you were right in making the decision of taking job A versus job B. Ah, so this is justice, like I said, and it's about balancing the scales it's the you were right card. <laughs> it's um, the karma card. Sometimes when this shows up, what I will tell clients is that karma will start to collect the debts that are owed to you, right? Because there's always people that have wronged us, that have been mean, maybe bullied us, that sort of thing, right? And um, I say when this card shows up, it means that those people that have hurt us that we can't you know, it's, and, it, and it's not good for us to actively retaliate against these people necessarily, but know that karma is going to take control and they're going to feel it a little bit, right? <clears throat> and so a lot of people get really happy about that. That's great. You know, like my enemies shall bow before me kind of thing. But it's also um, a bit of a, not a warning so much, but I always say, now, yes, there are people that have wronged you, people that owe karma because they've hurt you in some way and um, they've hurt you for no reason at all kind of thing, right? But we're also guilty of doing that. We can also be the toxic person sometimes. And as nice as it is to have our enemies paid back, it, it's a reminder that we need to adjust our karma balance as well because we all owe some karma all of us do because none of us are perfect right so now is the time to look for those opportunities to be able to pay it forward to be able to be charitable to be able to serve someone um i use examples of like if uh if the cashier asks you um if you want to donate to this say yes <laughs> you know give them a quarter give them 50 cents you know it doesn't have to be much you don't have to break the bank or you know you see the homeless guy on the street every homeless guy for the next month if this card shows up 
give them some money. And I mean money, not sandwiches. Um, because money is something that, it's an energy, and it's something that comes, it's le less strings are with it, less conditions, less judgment is with it. Because when you give a guy a sandwich, as generous as that is, you're placing judgment. Um, you're placing, you're saying, I don't trust you to spend the money the way I feel you should spend it. So I tell my clients, give them a, to a, a loony or a dollar. That's Canadian for dollar. Because um, <laughs> we have dollar coins. Um, so give them a loony or something. You know, not, not nothing big, nothing that's going to break the bank or anything. But do it for the next month if this card shows up. Because we all have our, that karma debt. And with every dollar you give away, you're just, you know, helping to balance your own scales. So that, you know, when you're called on your karma, that it's like, oh, well, look at all this good stuff she's done. <laughs> so this helps to balance everything out. So it's not only that karma is going to vanquish your enemies, <laughs> it's that you need to also pay attention to the karma you might owe to people. This is a time to say, I'm sorry. This is a time to be more charitable. This is a time to serve others and to be humble yourself so that you're earning your own good karma and paying off some of maybe your bad karma. Because like I said, we're, none of us are perfect. We all have moments when we were weak and we did something mean or said something that we shouldn't have. And, uh, you know, it's always good to kind of pay that back a little bit. So the next card we have is the hanging man. Um, or the hanged man. Sometimes they say hang, sometimes they ha say hanging. I tend to say hanging man. Now sometimes clients get a little scared of this. I think I included it in the scary cards because it doesn't always look great. He's tied up in a tree or on the, well, he's kind of in a tree, but it's kind of a, you know, a sort of a funk, uh, a tree that's been formed, <laughs> like it looks like a T. Um, so anyways, so it, it looks like he's been hung upside down. It looks like he's, oh my gosh, he's, you know, in an uncomfortable position. Um, but this card is very much, it's kind of like um, the high priestess in a way. And this card is an interesting card because sometimes when this card shows up, I will sometimes ask or, you know, once I talk to the client a little bit, I don't come right out of the gate with the, the question of, has your life been a little topsy-turvy? Are you feeling a little discombobulated? Because most people will answer yes to that. Um, so I kind of feel around as to how has life been lately? And like I said, some people get really scared of this card because they're like, oh my God, what does that mean? Is someone going to flip me upside down and put me, tie me into a tree? But if you look at it, most of the time there's like a, a rope or a chain or whatever it might be. In my working deck, my uh, gilded tarot deck, my working one, it's a chain, but it's not tied. It's very loose. And he's actually put himself upside down there. And there's another deck I have. I can't remember which one it is, but... He's actually in a headstand position as opposed to in a tree. Um, I think it's one of the Doreen Virtue ones. Mm. Sorry, I gotta wet my whistle again. So anyways, um, this is, like I said, this is a guy, he's got this saintly glow about him, right? So that that's his aura right there. So by going upside down, he's changing his aura. He's changing his connection. Right, because normally we're connecting between heaven and earth from our head here and earth down there. He's changed the position and changing the way he's connecting, and it's actually helping his aura. Um, so this is actually, like I said, like it's like the high priestess. It's a time of stillness. It's a time of trust and surrender. And really what he's doing upside down, you'll notice he's kind of in a almost a yoga pose, like the tree pose. Um, he's actually in a meditative state here. And this is what this card is about. A lot of times when this card shows up, it means the client needs to do a couple of things. It's either both things or just one of the things. But one of the things that they should do or look at doing is meditating. And that's usually the first question I ask, rather than, has life been topsy-turvy? I'll ask them, do you meditate? 
they say yes or no, or they say yes, but I haven't lately, I've fallen off the wagon, blah, 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 blah. And I always remind them, you know, like anything that you do, journaling, meditating, you know, going to the gym, all those things, of course, it's great if you can do it every day. Not all of us are going to do it every day. And some of us put pressure on ourselves to do all these things. And when it comes to spiritual growth, it shouldn't, I always say spiritual growth shouldn't be something that's stressful. <laughs> I mean, it's it's going to be messy and it will be stressful, but not in a way that, you know, I got to get this done kind of thing. It'll be stressful and like, oh my God, we're about to go over the hill, like as, as if you're on a roller coaster. It's going to be that kind of stress, exciting stress. It shouldn't be like, oh God, I have to journal. Oh God, I have to meditate. You know, it's not supposed to be stressful in that way. Because if you're going into meditation going, frig, I don't want to be here. Um, 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 okay, am I done yet? You know, like that's not really meditating. <laughs> it's not really going to get you further <laughs> in your spiritual growth. So what this card is, it's often a reminder to the client that now is a good time to get back to meditating. But I say treat meditating, treat journaling, treat those things, you know, if you say your prayers, things like that. Don't guilt yourself over not doing it every day. If you do it two or three times a week, great, right? It's better than not doing it at all. Because sometimes we fall off the wagon and we think I haven't journaled in a few days. I don't want to start yet. You know, I'm waiting to the beginning of the week or I'm waiting till the weekend or I'm waiting till the end of the month or because I'm going to guilt myself until then. It's like, no, 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 start whenever. Don't wait for a date. Some people wait for a date or it's been so long, you know, I'm not, it, it takes energy to get back into it. Yes, it does. But often it takes energy only because you're feeling guilty about not having done it. Forgive yourself for not having done it. It's okay. Do it right now in the moment when you're thinking about it. So it, when this card shows up, it's often about getting back to um, that meditative state and, and doing the meditations. Again, don't put the pressure. You don't have to do it every day. Just do it every other day to start or a couple times a week. Like a couple times a week meditating will change your life. And, and the more you grow and the more you change, the more you'll start doing the things like meditating and journaling and, and going to the gym or whatever it is that's keeping you healthy and happy, right? So like I said, there shouldn't be stress on this. The other thing that this card often um, sort of reflects to us is you need to change your perspective. And I often um, compare it to when we were little kids, did you ever lie in your bed and flip upside down and look at the world upside down and watch the feet walk by and that sort of thing, right? So that's what this guy's doing. So that's what I compare it to. He's not tied here. He's not being forced here. He's here because he put himself here. And he knows that he needs to change his perspective. So often when this card shows up, it's, I find more often than not, it's when someone's fighting about a situation or having an argument and they feel that their way is the right way and the only way. And I always say, well, part of it might be right, but maybe there's something you're missing and you need to change your perspective. Walk a mile in someone else's shoes sort of thing, right? But, you know, see what you're missing about the situation. When you change your perspective, you might find that the other person is not completely wrong just like you're not completely right. And maybe there's a compromise somewhere in between that needs to happen where you both kind of get both your rights. Um, so a lot of times too, when he shows up, it can be that you feel trapped or stuck in a spot. So that's why you have to flip upside down, change your perspective, do some meditation. And that's where the stillness and the silence comes in because it's in the stillness and the silence that you receive the messages. Um, and you only get moments of it in meditation. Meditation isn't all, my mind is completely still and it's an open slate and you know, in come these messages. Cause people always say, I can never stop thinking when I'm meditating. Well, congratulations, neither can anyone else. <laughs> the point of meditation, it's a very active um, activity. And meditation is 
about coming back to center. It's about discipline and control of your mind. It's not about, I mean, yes, it is about emptying your mind, but it's not necessarily about that. And that's where the paradox lies, right? So when a thought comes in, and oftentimes it's stupid everyday stuff, like I got to get the roast out of the freezer so I can cook it for dinner, or I got all that laundry I got to do, or whatever it might be, or my boss is on my ass at work and I got to get this done. So these thoughts come in. Or I got to remember to call Mary. Oh my God, I forgot to call Mary. I got to, you know, so that, that thought might come in and our instinct when we're meditating is to grab it and to hang on to it because we're like, I don't want to forget that because I've, you know, I put it off. I got to hang on to that. I got to hang on to that. So we're thinking about that and we start to become obsessed about that wee little thought of I need to call Mary or I need to get the roast out because if I don't hang on to it, I'm going to forget about it, right? No, let it go. Let it go floating right out. If it's important enough, it'll come back. Trust me, especially if you get your mind into that meditative state, it will come back. Don't obsess, don't um, get so worried. That's your monkey mind working, by the way, when it wants to grab that thought. And it's like, you must hang on to this because you'll forget it otherwise. That's your monkey talking to you. <laughs> so put the monkey back in the cage and go, no, sorry, I'm gonna let go of this thought and I'm gonna come back to center. And then you think about something else and it comes in and you go, no, I'm gonna just send it on its way and I'm gonna come back to center. And I'm gonna come back to center. And I'm gonna come back to center. That is meditation. And I'm gonna come back to center. And you can even say that. I say that to myself sometimes. And I'm gonna come back to center. And back to center we go. And that's why um, a lot of meditations will get you to count because counting distracts your monkey mind. Um, so we all think, even the most enlightened monks on the planet think while they're meditating. This, the, the idea is to learn to let those flaw, thoughts flow out so that you can open and expand your mind a little bit more each time that you do it. And each time that you do it, the moments of stillness and silence grow a little bit more each time. A lot of us come to meditation and want to be good at it right out of the box. You know, um, oh, I just want to be able to just sit and calm myself down. Or people sometimes will wear it like a badge that I'm just too busy, I'm always thinking. Well, like I said, congratulations. So are the rest of us. Um, <laughs> But meditation is also about getting deeper than the thoughts of the pot roast and the, Mary, the Marys of the world that you have to call and the bosses that are, you know, on your ass and the laundry that you have to do. It's about going deeper. And what you're ultimately trying to do is you're trying to connect with your inner self, your higher self, um, and, and to get those messages, to connect with your subconscious um, while you're still awake. You do connect with it when you're dreaming, but we often don't remember those. Um, and that's why it's good to keep a dream journal. I'll talk about that another time. But that's what meditating is. So I get, I got into meditation. <laughs> I could talk for hours about meditation. But that's like, that's a very basic beginner way um, to meditate is to know and to understand that it's, it's an activity. It's not... Um, it is and it isn't an activity, but it's always about coming back to center, letting the thoughts flow as they need to so that you can get to that secondary level of where you're now hitting your real self and your higher self. So that's what the hanging man is about. Um, let me make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, so it's about thorough and thoughtful examination, which is all about meditation. Um... And like I said, it's trusting and surrendering um, so that you can let the energy of the universe come in. So that trusting and surrendering is one of the steps of manifesting. And I talk about that in my HEAT program. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what the Hanging Man is about, is learning to trust and surrender. And that is actually one of the hardest and the biggest steps when we're manifesting because we tend to want to obsess. It's like grabbing the thoughts when you're meditating. We want to micromanage our manifestations instead of giving them over and letting the universe present us with the thing that we've asked for. Um, when we, 
you know, say, well, you know, I'm in charge here and I'm going to make this happen and blah, blah, blah. Instead of taking that, take inspired action, wait for signs to come in, wait for direction, take inspired action, and that will lead to trusting and surrendering, which allows the energy of the universe to flow in for you. And that's what he's all about. He's a very complicated man. <laughs> um, so I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to get into, well, the next card. We're getting into the dark part. Um, the hanging man is just a glimmer because sometimes people get a little bit afraid. But the next card is going to be the death card. But that will be in the next video. So we're going to go into the dark part of tarot in the next video because now we're going to go way dark. Yeah, this will be good. Okay, I'll talk to you in a bit. Bye.